Hi folks, it's good to be with you, love you all. I want to ask some questions concerning the Quran today for all the Muslims out there. Uh, some questions, if you can answer those questions, I'd be very grateful. So, in the Quranic history, it's supposed to be the Quran was written down on stick stones and bones. So I want to ask a question to the Muslims out there. Do we have any of these sticks? Do we have any of these bones? Do we have any? I don't think we do. So it's a myth. It says in the history that the 70 memorizers were killed in the Battle of Yemeni. Yemeni, December 6, 532. 70 memorizers killed in the Battle of Yemeni. December 6, 632. Can anybody provide the hadith for that and the chain of narration for that? Caliph Abu, Abu Bakr ordered that a full Quran be written down. What divine authority did Caliph Abu Bakr have? Who gave him the authority? Was it a prophet that gave him the authority? Zayed bin Thabit collected parts of the Quran and wrote them on a scroll. Who gave him authority? What authority did he have? What prophet said that he could do it? Could you provide the evidence? Did he have divine sanction to do that or was it just his own opinion? The copy was given to Hafsa, one of Muhammad's wives. What authority did she have, divine authority, did she have from a prophet for having this copy of the Quran? The Quran was collected by four men. Sayyid Bakari 5155. Sayyid Bakari 6. 521. There were four people who collected it. You can help me with the pronunciation. Mate, uh, um, ministry. Can I come on the camera? Come on the camera. Go on, go on, go on, bro. Can you answer the question? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, bro. Right. So, sorry, what's, what is this about? So, you, you're well, Christian I've, and I've you... Done, I've done some... Nice to meet you. YouTube, what's your name? Jibad. Jibad, nice to meet you. I've done uh, videos about the Bible. So I'm just doing some videos on the Quran. All right. So I'm just asking Muslim questions about the, com uh, the, the formation of the Quran when it was collected. So it was collected by four men in Sayyid Bukhari, five one five five, Sayyid Bukhari six five two one. The four men are Obay bin Kayab Abu Al Darda. Sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, Muda bin Jabal, Abu Zayed, Ziyad bin Thabi. Okay, can I, can I just have a... Let me finish, let finish. So, it was collected by these four guys. So they say. Okay. So what divine authority did they have? They didn't. They didn't have any, uh, basically, the collection of the, of the Holy Book of the Quran that we have, large parts of it have been missed out, and uh, a lot of the yeah, interpretations of it have been misinterpreted uh, intentionally to basically sow discord and confusion like what we see here. So I would basically say this, I am a Muslim. Not Step closer there bro. Look, yeah. just closer here. Oh, Alright, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so basically, um, as a Muslim, you know, as a Muslim, I'm basically saying that large parts of the Holy Book of the Quran have been missed out. Uh, large parts of it have been misinterpreted, okay? Most of the hadiths, other than very few prophetic ones, we can take for value, the rest of them we can dismiss. Um, I'm in a very good position to say this, um, if you'd like to carry on, because you're actually so, talking to so, a real music. So are you, Not these big bearded fellows. Shia, I don't like these big bearded Are you fellows. Shia or Sunni? My bloodline, I'm a direct descendant of Prophet Muhammad, direct descendant, which would class me as a Sayyid Shia. Shia, okay. Wow. Can, can you just explain to us, 
that's how the viewers go because not a lot of people know apart from yeah. the Islam you have basically that's been given to you is false could you explain to people what the difference is between Shia and Sunni okay basically uh, Sunnis have a different school of thought because they follow some different fellows and Shias have a different school of thought because they actually follow um, cosmic royalty okay okay and I can prove that so have the Sunnis put things in the Quran they shouldn't put in um, I'm not going to discredit anyone, but I'm again going to say that the book has been misinterpreted. So have been, so have all the other religious texts that have come before it. So I'm an advocate of the Bible, of the Torah, of all the holy scriptures that have come before, because the truth could not have just come 1,400 years ago. Because if anyone knows anything, then that, that, that revelation that came was described as the last revelation, only indicating to a smart man that there may have been revelations prior to this. Prior to this, hence it was the last revelation. Because again, I'm going to say quite clearly, a lot of the hadiths, a lot of the hadiths are fabricated to basically cause a scene like what you're seeing in the background over there. Big bearded fellas heckling at each other for no apparent reason. How's everybody against beard? You got a small can, beard. Can, can oh, I've got a just, lovely beard. I like your beard, bro. Can I just say that this this guy is one of the nicest Muslims I've met in the park. He's very the respectful. Best. He's very respectful. He's, he's helping us to understand rather than getting upset with what I'm saying is, is helping me to understand the Shia because you're the first Shia, Shia Muslim that I've ever, I've ever had a real discussion with well, on, on, on camera. Shia on camera. Well, yeah. is, is heresy Okay. because in fact I was just reading about it earlier when I came here and not just now but uh, uh, sorry, I don't Shia. Shia. Shia is oh, heresy. Oh, let me finish, let me finish. Oh, you can let that. me finish, yeah. engage with it, engage with it. We've got the book right. on. Abdullah bin Masood did not regard Surah 113 and 114 as Surahs of the Quran. That's in um, in Abu Ali introduction to Surah 113. Yeah. What do you think of that as Basically, a Shia? Basically, what I'm going to say as a Shia, forget any any label. I'm going to say this: this guy, it doesn't help him progress spiritual, spiritually, and it doesn't help me spiritually progressing knowing this information. This is now useless information for useless people who maybe need it. I don't represent that. I represent the truth. And if this, if, 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 if you would engage with me, then I'll tell you basically why I represent the truth and why we can dismiss most of this this information, which is not of not any of not of any use at all. So that's all I basically want to do is I want to dispel okay. dispel the myth. That, okay. That we so you dispel. You tell us why in these ancient sources, yeah. Abu Abdullah bin Masul did not regard Surah 113 and 114 as Surahs of the Quran. So can you tell us why this information from Hadiths, why it's not valuable? Okay. Well, thank you for the, sharing the, this. The, 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 the information... Can you name does, those Surahs, 113 and 114? No, I don't need to name them. I don't need to name them. This isn't... I don't need to name anything. If, if you hear me out, what I'm basically saying is, a lot of these people who have uh, have been put into uh, script and, and their names are in hadiths and they're saying that they've left, left this out or they've left that out, they had no divine appointment to leave or put anything in anyway. All of the holy books of the, of the Almighty, of God, are preserved by the Almighty and not by any man because all men do is corrupt books put their own details in there and corrupt books and then what we have is again a corrupted a corrupted not not any religion of God is a corrupt religion but men have corrupted all religions and now we have a racket going on and basically that's what that's how I feel about well these. that's why the Prophet Muhammad he was ordered to recite Alright, well, you come here. I've got a faithful radio. Basically, what I'm basically what I'm an advocate of is the truth. And I want to dispel certain notions. So 
what would he what would he do with a nine year old girl? He never had he never had no nine year old girl. I wanna dispel I wanna dispel silly myths, silly things like this about Prophet Muhammad walking about in a cave. Because uh, yeah, this is what they're saying. They're, they're saying that Prophet Muhammad. Brother, brother, sorry. Who is they? Let, let, let's just. Let's just the, the, the general, the general person says he's Muslim. Oh, he's Islamophobe. Right. Let, let me finish. No, let, me finish. let me finish. Let me finish. I know what you're saying. So you. Well, you ain't got no patience. You must go over there. Right. Right. Really? The, if you don't want to hear this, go, but because later in a minute. You're gonna have I to lie. To elaborate. What age was she then? If she wasn't nine? She, she wasn't nine. No, no, are you? Are you? Are you both? You. Here we go. We have people actually justifying paedophilia. It's disgusting. No, I just want oh, to Muhammad didn't have no nine-year-old girl. Move, man. Keep your nine-year-old girl. Disgusting behaviour. Right. Nine year old girl. Rob, Rob. Uh, they should hang you for Rob, saying that. From the Shia point of view. Yeah, I know. Let, let me I know. just I'm From the Shia yeah, point of view. These, these uh, sources that I'm giving you, the Sunni no, see it as authority. No, no, let me just finish. Right? So, in the Sunni sources, they have Bukhari and Muslim, Luke Muslim, yeah? And so these hadiths about Aisha and all this, etc. Right. But from your point of view, you're saying they've got it all right. Okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Now, uh, in a hadith in Bukhari, says that Uthman burnt the Quran because no, 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 there was an argument about seven. You give us the Shia perspective. I don't let represent the Shia perspective either. Just let me, let me, let me. I only represent the truth. Let me finish. The Sunnis have a hadith where Uthman burnt the Quran and there was arguments about the pronunciation of the Quran. Right? Let me finish. Because there were seven different ways of pronunciation. Seven different ways. So, my point to you is, when he burnt the Quran, did he burn the Quran or not? From a Shia point of view. From, uh, again, I don't speak for Shia, but from my point of view, um, men seem to take the truth and do what they want with it. And this is what we end up with. If that answers your question, I don't put any legitimacy into any of these hadiths other than very few prophetic ones. And like I said, the, the book largely has been intentionally misinterpreted, as has all the other scriptures from before. I mean, these guys just say, oh, I don't care about the Bible. The Bible is a true and absolute divine book of the Creator. So is the Torah. So my friend, to make this a little bit more palatable and understandable for your viewers, where am I coming from? Basically, I'm a direct blood descendant of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, um, now, this is very important. He is cosmic royalty because the Queen of England has claimed descendancy as the 43rd great granddaughter of Prophet, Muhammad, of Prophet Muhammad. This is a fact, you can Google it. So, as the King of Jordan, he's claimed that he's the 41st descendant of Prophet Muhammad. So, this is all fact, you can Google it. The reason uh, being for this is the fact that they practice alchemy, me and you know it as black magic. So basically, I have a carbon cloud around me that Prophet Muhammad had. I speak a lot about mythology. Okay, why carbon? Because the universe is rife with carbon. Before a star is born, it goes through a triple alpha carbon process. Okay, so you're basically a star. This is all about quantum reality. And uh, what spins around me is a carbon cloud in the form of snakes. Why snakes? Because your DNA is sequenced in the form of a double helix snake. The medical producers is two snakes intertwined. Royal families of the world use snakes and lions on the royal crest because they know something we don't. So basically what spins around me in a, in a carbon format, you and me are made of a carbon 12 atom by the way, so what spins around me is a carbon format of, of, uh, of carbon in a spiritual format and it's being quantified and it will be given to the, to, to the world publicly and then you can take it or leave it. But the truth spins around me and I still ain't got a clue what these are talking about if anyone can help okay, me right. but that's it now, that's okay say. now now it's all that I, want, I want your reaction from a sheer perspective now listen yeah, listen now just answer this and then I want to say what I want to say in the sheer perspective is there only one Quran in the sheer perspective there is only one Quran. Okay. Oh, no, on a general basis, there should only be one. Okay. Now, now there's billions of Explain hundreds. to me in the Arabic. Now, I want your explanation now. In the Arabic, when you look at the Arabic. That was just the language used at finish, that time. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I want your perspective as a Shia. Yeah? In the language, in the language of Arabic, yeah. you have what is called the Has Quran. Yeah. And then you have the Wash Quran. Now, in the Hafs Quran, in Surah 2, 1, 4, 140, it says, 
or do you say that? Now listen, in the wash version, in Surah 2, 140, it says, or do they say that Abraham? Uh, look, mate, look, this is what I'm saying, mate. All this is useless. Why are you trying to inter interpret this? They've mis they misinterpreted it anyway. They they've given you let some. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. One more. Anyway. One more. One more. It's not going to help you. One more. One more. In the Hass version, in Surah 2, 2, 1, 9, it says, In them is a big sin. In the Dori version, in Quran 2, yeah. chapter 2, 2, 9, it says a lot of sin. So in the half, it says in them is a big sin. And in the Duri version, I'll, Arabic, it says a lot of sin. How do you cope with that as a uh, Basically, again, it makes my point. They don't know what they're interpreting. Um, they're just confusing people. Again, it doesn't really matter. I don't, it doesn't really matter. None of this information is of any use to anyone from 1400 years ago. I say we leave it, drop it, and we, we work with the new age, we work with spirituality, we take, in, we take in all religions, we, we love everyone, we respect everyone, I understand and, and we saying. forget I understand. Trying, trying to... I understand what these you're saying. People, these people are goons. I understand what you're saying, and I like, your, I like the statement, these yeah. people are goons, yeah? But these goons are giving you some information that in the Arabic, you have the Duri, listen, you have the Duri that says one, and then another Arabic version that says something different. So, listen, it clarifies my wait, point. So, so the point is, how can there be one Quran if there are different Qurans? There's only one Quran, just like there's only one Bible, just like there's only one of every holy book and it's preserved not by any earthly man or any earthly library. They are preserved. Um, the versions you have are largely misinterpreted and uh, they can, they, you know, they, they could spend the next million years if they want arguing. Um, what's around me is the truth. Right. End of story. Right. So right. we're going to basically get this point of five, give, give them, tell, right. we're going to tell them about their religion and hopefully they'll get rid of their big birds. Okay, I heard that. Now, yeah? take sort of one, <laughs> take sort of one. Take sort of one, yeah? Sorry, that's my girlfriend. Right. Baby, that's girl. I'm girlfriend. almost done. I'm almost done. He's almost done. He's going to get beaten up today. <laughs> I'm not getting beaten up. Say hello to him, please, mate. Tell yeah, him mate, the I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian preacher and we're just having a nice discussion. And he's a lovely guy. You, you're very blessed to have him. <laughs> see? See? Alright, go on. I'll, uh, I'll find you back, baby. Go on. I'm on camera, ain't it? I'll find you back. He's on camera, yeah? No. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, you'll be 10 pounds for that, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Right. Here's a question for you, yeah? Last question, and you've done very, very well, yeah? Take note, when you're having a discussion on an academic level, use the word goons. Very effective. <laughs> I'm the illiterate of today, by the way. Very effective. Don't forget that, very important. There was a literate once. Here's, here's my question, here's my question. Right? And I'm, I'm more interested to know the sheer perspective. When you say you read the Quran, and you read Surah 1, or any Surah, just take Surah 1 as an example. From a sheer perspective, how do you know that verse is of God and how do you interpret it? I can clarify that the Quran is the book, is is the book, is a book from the Almighty, as well as I brought in the Bible and all these other holy books we've heard about. What spins around me will quantify that these books are real, very real. But unfortunately, we are dealing with big bearded fellas and we were dealing with them 400 years ago and uh, they basically misinterpreted and gave us what we have today which is very uh, false and it's very it's it's just not good because look at the state of look at the state of affairs around the world not just in this park but around the world so basically um like i said no one on this earth can really claim that they know the book okay. no one knows any book now let me explain the sunni perspective most scholars to say number one the way you verify the quran is the word of god one is it's got to be the arabic it's got to be good arabic number two it's got to come from the uthman text right and then there's another verification but you would say no no none no, of that none of that have an open mind and big al the almighty will open up your heart and maybe you all will have a carbon cloud spinning around you yeah but that's what i want to say is that no if, if you're going to narrow yourself down to this religion that religion you're going to have a see your mind is is the fabric of space your mind is connected to the fabric of space the brain is just the wet stuff the mind when you close your eyes you see nothing but black you have to have an open mind to have an open heart these people have narrowed their thought form thus they're too rigid and thus 
they're too busy beating their wives and kids. Okay. So, you okay. know. One last thing, and then we'll finish on it. And we'll shake it again. My perspective is I'm a Christian. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Just hear me out. He died on a cross for your sin. He rose again. And my belief is if you believe that verse there, if you believe on Jesus Christ, confess your sin and believe in Him, trust Him as your Lord and Savior, not what you can do, but upon Jesus Christ, then you'll be saved. Yeah, well, I believe that. But what do you believe uh, as a Shia concerning Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ, us love, nothing but love and respect for Him. He's a true slave, a true messenger of Big Al, the Almighty God. All of that, got nothing but love and respect for Him. Um, the, only, the only place I would um, not agree with you is he didn't actually, he did ask for, um, he did ask God, he did ask Big Al not to die on that, on, not to die on that cross. He, there is a verse somewhere in your Bible, you're sat in, you'll read it. He asked God sat in and God did deliver that for him. His soul was taken, his spirit was taken out of the body. So the body was on the cross. By the way, Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming in a black cube and he's on, he's coming here. He is a true being and he was the son of Mary and all of that was um, miraculous, all of that was miraculous and we love him, we love him. These lot have gone crazy. So can we just show the people on this video, I'm a Christian, his brother's a Shia and we have not got angry, we've talked to each other with respect, we've listened to each other and we're, we're friends so that's how it should be. And that's how it should be, an open mind and open heart. God bless you. Cool man. Sweet bro. Thank you. Bro, make me famous, man. I'll make you famous. I'm rich. God bless you.